everybody. Good afternoon and welcome. Greetings from the University of Finley here in Finley, Ohio. I am your host, Julie Klingler, and I serve as the director for the Wolf Center for Alumni, Parents, and Friends. It's a pleasure to have you all with us today. We're welcoming our lifelong learning group uh, to this session. Many of you are returning from this morning's session, so welcome back. Uh, and others have joined us for our first two sessions of the month. And so um, we come back today. This is our last day for April. So uh, for that, we are a little bit sad, but uh, know that the next session in October, we are really looking forward to. So um, this, this time though, this April, we have had great content. We've had um, sessions ranging from history to military experiences, to medical, to financial planning. Um, research. And today we're going to turn our attention to community updates. So we get to um, talk about uh, and uh, listen to plans in our community in Findlay, in the Hancock County area, and Northwest Ohio. And we're joined today by Mayor Christina Murin. She will be giving us a local update. And also, we're, also, we're going to be talking to Crystal White, our UF Director of Service and Community Engagement. Crystal's bringing two students with us today, uh, with her today, who is going, who will talk about their community involvement this year and uh, what that's looked like um, during the pandemic and what their hopes are for uh, the upcoming year. Um, before I turn the presentation over to our panelists today, I wanna cover just a few announcements. Wanna let you know that um, we want you to make the most of this virtual event. So you can do that by doing a couple of things on your end. Up in the upper right-hand corner of your um, Zoom screen, you have an option for different views. And if you, um, if you click the speaker view, you'll have the best and the largest picture of those who are speaking at any given time. Um, we also ask you to take a look at the bottom of your um, screen and click on uh, chat and put all of your chat and comments down there and engage with your friends today. Also, we've got a Q&A area. So we'll be doing a Q&A session at the end of this um, a session today. So put your questions in there so that we can get those answered for you. Um, and also display a great name. We wanna make sure that we can identify you. We need your first and last name for our questions, for our chat and for our prizes. And speaking of prizes, we do have a prize to give away at the end of our session today. We will spin the wheel for a, a name, a drawing, and you have to be present to win. So stay with us for that giveaway. So without further ado, I'd like to go into introducing our panel. We're gonna start with um, Crystal today and, uh, and students, Nicole and Rachel. And so I'd like to introduce Crystal first. She is the Director of Service and Community Engagement here at UF. She has worked in the volunteer and service learning field for 16 years. And she's also the advisor of UF Habitat for Humanity and the co-advisor of our Oilers Serving Abroad program. Crystal graduated from Ohio Northern University with a BSBA in International Business and Economics and a BA in Music and French, and she also received her MBA from the University of Finley. Uh, move on to Nicole. Nicole is a junior student in the ECHO cardiography program, who's also minoring in philosophy. She is an RA here on our campus, an orientation leader as well, and a member of the President's Student Council on Belonging. She's also a member of the Finley African Students Association and is involved in faith-based activities on campus and in the surrounding community. Uh, Rachel is a senior animal science major at the University of Finley. Uh, she's involved in research. She's also a part of the Mortar Board National Honor Society. Uh, she works in fundraising as the chair for Block and Bridal and Tribeta Biological Honor Society. And she founded UF Four Paws, which is a collegiate club partnered with the nonprofit organization Four Paws for Ability, which serves individuals with disabilities. Rachel has served as its president for two years. So at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Crystal. And Crystal, I'll let you lead this with your team and, um, and uh, take it away, Crystal. Awesome. All right. Thank you, first of all, for the invitation to be with you today. And I'm so honored and proud just of the service um, efforts at the University of Finley. 
And also, of course, we could not do this without our wonderful community partners and our wonderful students. So um, I really, truly am blessed and I feel like I'm the, the kind of the link between the two. So um, just a very quick snapshot of service. And I would say that the first part um, is just that before the pandemic, we had direct service where we would get to do um, volunteer projects like building on homes, distributing groceries, um, visiting residents at nursing homes and many other things. We also had indirect service, which is more kind of behind the scenes, that backbone work of organizations. So we would help with cleaning up churches. We would go out and um, help sort donations, clean up the river. We don't get to actually meet the recipients of service when it's that type. But it's still really important, right, to have those steps before the end result for service. Um, and we also have service learning, which is where students are putting um, their service into real life practice by practicing what they learn in the classroom. So we have, for example, graphic design students, they learn in the classroom. And then as part of their major and part of their class, they do service projects where they design brochures for our community. So all that was before the pandemic after and currently, as we're still kind of current in the pandemic, I would say that I was so inspired. Our students wanted to keep serving, but they really wanted to serve in a, you know, we wanted them to serve in a safe way, in a responsible way. And so they challenged me, how can we still serve? What can we do? And we did a lot more virtual volunteering. We went to nursing homes virtually through Zoom. And I was terrified because a lot of the nursing homes would be in the dining room with just a few of their residents spaced out. And our picture, our video was on the big screen TV. And I was like, oh my goodness, my face doesn't need to be that big. But overall, you know, our idea was how can we still connect? How can we still value and show that we are here for our community, even if we can't be in person? Um, so again, just thank you for this opportunity. And I'm going to turn it over because I've spoken too long. I'd love to hear from the students. So, so I think um, Nicole will go first and then Rachel. And they're just here to talk about their service experiences as well. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you so much, Miss Crystal. So my name is Nkoli Mungabo, as I have been formally introduced, and I'm going to sit here and talk to you a little bit about my service experience in Findlay. So when I sit and think about frequently asked questions I've had over the course of my life, one of the most frequently asked questions that has stood out to me is, what, would you, what do you want to become when you grow up? And I've asked it of other people and other people have asked it of me. But one question that fascinates me quite a lot is who am I now or better yet, who do I want to be now? Who I am now is a 21 year old international student from Zambia whose dream is to make her mark on the world. How you might be asking, well, by being the sort of person I would like to see. And that kind of person is the kind of person that I would like to be inspired by because she is the sort of person who loves her community, not only in word, but in action as well. Ever since coming to the University of Findlay, the Beaufort Center has played an invaluable role in my life in shaping me into the sort of person who takes part in acts of service. and this has taken place from my very first service project during freshman orientation weekend to many others that have spanned many different locations on the UF campus or throughout the surrounding community in Findlay. During my participation in service, I have gotten the opportunity to sit down with many different members of this community and be in service to them. Now, Service is to me is not just about the acts of volunteerism, but it's also about the people who are benefited by these acts. And when I think about these two particular opportunities that I have been given the chance to participate in are of particular importance to me. 
the first one is the six weeks I spent during the service ambassadors program volunteering at Sunrise Retirement Home. So I was fresh off the boat in the United States and I got paired with a student and we went to Sunrise Retirement Home every Saturday for six weeks and would spend from about 10 o'clock in the morning until 1 p.m. And whether it was playing bingo with the residents or sitting in the reminiscence ward with the different residents and just talking with them or participating in different activities, be it baking or knitting, I remember feeling like I had finally arrived. Before, before those opportunities, I felt a little bit disconnected, but by being involved in the service, I began to know and learn more about the different members in my community and the different people who had lived in Finlay for years upon years. I remember the residents telling me stories about the University of Finlay back when it was a college before it was even a university and telling me how they went there. Some of them met their spouses here. And I feel like to me that was very important because it put a face to the people that I was helping. They were no longer just, oh, these are people you're doing something for. It's not, these are people with names. This is Miss Nancy. She has a husband, she has children. And for me, that meant a lot to me. And then the second experience that I'd like to talk about is um, the amount of time that, that the different opportunities that I have gotten to help with the Helping Hands food drive, as well as the mobile food pantry. Again, when we think of different issues affecting our communities and affecting the world around us, it can be very easy to isolate the opportunities to, oh, this is just a problem that needs fixed. But it's like, what about the people being affected by the problem? So being able to participate in the food drives and the food pantry, whether it was collecting different canned foods to be sent to the city mission and at different places in Findlay or actually distributing food or being part of a group of students that were allowed to organize a room where people could come and sit as they waited to collect food during their food drive and learn about the different places where, where each of the students in that room were from. That for me felt real. And I think there's no way I could be a part of service without it feeling real. I don't think we're ever going to be able to solve any of the major issues that we have in this world if we separate the issues from the people that are being affected by these issues. And for me, service reminds me of that. It reminds me that when I get out of bed each morning thinking about wanting to pursue a career in echocardiography, I'm not just thinking about the tasks that I have to complete, but instead I'm thinking about the people that are going to be benefited by those tasks, the families that they belong to, the churches they belong to, the communities they belong to, and the people that miss them and hope that they feel better and hope that they get better. And so that's what service means to me. And lastly, for me, being part of acts of service makes me feel alive. Because when I sit and I look at the world around me and I ask, how do I know that I'm here? Well, I know that I'm here because even the smallest things that I do are capable of impacting the lives of those around me. So those are just a few of my experiences and I'm happy and honored to have the opportunity to share them with you. Hello everybody, my name is Rachel Quant and I have a unique way of volunteering. And this is Harvest. She is a service dog in training. Um, so she is with Four Paws for Ability that trains and places service dogs um, for children and veterans with disabilities. So I actually founded a club on campus at the University of Finley to uh, allow other students to get involved with this organization. We have been on campus for two years now and have actually worked with over 15 service dogs in training, and three of them have already been placed as service dogs. Harvest is actually my sixth service dog in training that I've worked with, um, and uh, we continue to work with dogs on campus. We currently have six service dogs in training, learning and being socialized to the college um, environment. So 
socialization at an early age is important for every dog, but specifically for a dog that has a future in service um, work. We have actually volunteered um, throughout the community at nursing homes, um, the middle school, uh, Blanchard Valley Center, as well as going to various um, outings like we went axe throwing downtown this past weekend. We've gone to the Finley Farms. We want to um, prepare the dogs for any kind of activity that they're going to have in their future life. Uh, the main goal of our organization is to get very confident dogs um, and our uh, happiest is when we're able to volunteer with our volunteering. So we use our service dogs in training a lot to bring joy to the community as well as educating the public um, on service dogs, um, emotional support animals, therapy animals. There's various differences between those types of animals. Um, so it's very important for people to learn what the differences are um, so that dogs can be correctly represented um, so that's all I have. But uh, since the university has been um, active on campus, we have been able to provide a lot of joy and a sense of community, um, not only with students, but we've also been working a lot with outreach to the rest of the university and, and the community as well. Awesome. Thank you so much to Nicole and Rachel. And I just am, I, I could have picked so many students, but these are some of my students that I just think have display the passion and the heart for service. And um, from what they talked about, whether it's visiting at nursing homes, um, their first semester or visiting with dogs um, to that human relationship, that human connection. Um, I'm just so happy and I hope that they will carry this forward in their future. I really do. And that's kind of my end goal. And I'm so happy to be a part of this event. And I know it's with the alumni office. And I always think, what will our alumni do? How will they impact their hometowns beyond Finley? And I know, obviously, our mayor is a wonderful example of that. So I'm so happy to hear her speak as well. Um, but again, thank you for this opportunity. Crystal, thank you. And also Rachel and Nicole, wonderful um, examples of service right here in our area and the great things that you all are doing. Um, we will take, I've got some questions that have come in related to, uh, to the student service and we'll take those in a little while at the end of the session. But for now, what I would like to do is I'd like to move forward and introduce our speaker, Christina Murin. So Mayor Murin, um, won the mayoral election in 2019 and began her four year term January 1, 2020. Um, she is a Finley native and graduated summa cum laude from the University of Finley in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science in Economics and Marketing and a minor in Finance. She's also a graduate of, of the 2014 class of the Joanne Davidson Ohio Leadership Institute. Prior to being mayor, um, Mirren served as the Director of Business and Physician Development for Pain Management Group, where she had worked for the previous five years. Mayor Mirren was the youngest member of Pain Management Group, holding a director or high, higher level position. Mayor Mirren's work focused there on providing alternatives to opioid use for patients suffering from acute and chronic pain. In the community, Mayor Mirren is very, very busy. She is a member of the Findlay Family YMCA Board of Directors. She's also a member of the Board of Directors uh, for the Ohio Mayors Alliance and serves as the Midwest Chair for the U.S. Conference of Mayors Membership Committee. She also serves on the Ohio Drug Transparency and Affordability Council and the Ohio Advisory Committee for the US Global Leadership Coalition as well. That is a lot. And so now, <laughs> and she is so busy, but we are so pleased that she was able to pop in here today and talk to us a little bit about community updates and how things have gone this past year and, mm -hmm. um, and where she sees it in the future. So Mir Mirren, please take it away. Well, wonderful. Thank you, Julie. And I certainly enjoyed getting to hear from the students and um, how encouraging it is to, to hear how they give back to our community and how they are growing as individuals um, and certainly understanding the importance of 
um, humanity in general. Um, so I would like to share my screen if I'm able to, not a big deal if not. <clears throat> yeah, you should have it now. All right, perfect. Thank you. And so my, my view may be a little off to the side as I look at my second screen to share slides. Um, so today we don't have a ton of time and certainly it has been a jam packed year and mayor is always a busy position. But this past year, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, how our community uh, prepared, responded and is recovering um, from the COVID pandemic as we um, work as a community to position ourselves for the future. And then talk a little bit about um, how I see the next couple of years going for our community. Let's see, there we go. <clears throat> so a year we'll not forget. Uh, certainly the COVID-19 pandemic covered many of the headlines, but so many other events also deeply impacted our community. Um, with the COVID pandemic, the economic uncertainty that brought for many, as well as um, the racial protests, the political unrest, um, and then some local events, uh, such as the issue with uh, Father Mike at St. Michael's. You know, it was a very tenuous year, and certainly I felt uh, very stressed at times, but I also continue to feel very blessed that I am in this position right now. And um, I'm a person of faith, and it's a very freeing uh, thing to to feel that you are in the position that you are supposed to be in. Um, and that has certainly been how I felt. Um, so I wanted to just very quickly, you know, as I talked about kind of the racial um, protests that we experienced, um, I want to just hit real quick, the, the image that I have on your screen is Officer or Sergeant Harmon, um, who is a long-term member of the Finley Police Department, kneeling and praying with the group of protesters that was in front of the courthouse. And, and they were out there for a couple of weeks. Um, this was one of the first days they were out there. And I just feel so blessed um, within our community that as soon as kind of everything was unfolding and we got word that there was gonna be some protesters in our community, as I spoke with our police chief and our police department, um, I obviously wanted them to know that I supported them and I recognize that they are good people and they have a very important job to do and that they are hurt anytime they see bad actors within their ranks because it doesn't represent who they are. Um, and they understand as well that um, there is there are issues within some departments and with individuals, and there's always room for improvement as well. And so we as a department and as the city wanted to go out and be a part of those conversations um, so that the individuals in our community did not feel like it was a um, human humanity versus um, police officers conversation, but how do we lift everyone up and recognize that everyone has value in our community? And so I love that picture um, because it certainly represents our approach in this community. <clears throat> So how do we how how did we position our community and how do we continue to position our community for success? Um, so what you'll see on the board is prepare, respond, recover. Um, and anyone who has talked with me over the past year or read my articles in the newspaper is probably familiar with this statement. Um, crisis management is kind of a, a three phased uh, program, and that has really been our approach: is um, preparing for a crisis, responding to a crisis and then recovering from a crisis. And we have been fortunate that over the last you know, decade, we've really positioned our community for economic uncertainty by being fiscally responsible, maintaining our infrastructure wisely by putting about 20% of our annual income tax revenue towards infrastructure and capital improvements, um, as well as then building relationships. And um, so when, when we talk about preparing, um, I, there, this isn't a very good picture of me, but this picture on the side I wanted to share because this is literally uh, day one of kind of the pandemic. What I'll say is was the pan start of the pandemic. This was the day that we got word from the governor that schools were being gonna be closed and that students were not going back to school except for that next day to get their belongings um, back in March of 2020. 
And as soon as I got that word from the governor's office, I got a hold of 20 community leaders approximately. Um, so you'll see Dr. Dowling, who's the medical director at Marathon, you'll, um, Ed Kurt and Troy Roth, um, the prior superintendent and current superintendent of Finley City Schools, Mike Iyer, the superintendent or deacon from St. Michael's, as well as um, the, the deacon for the St. Michael's School, Dr. Ratnasamy, who's an infectious disease physician here in Finley, Tim Miley with economic development. And we had a group, a number of other individuals, representatives from the United Way, Community Foundation, YMCA. It really speaks back to one, the relationships, but also what we always kind of call the Finley formula working together to address a problem. Um, government can't solve all problems, but what we can do is be the convener to bring people to the table. I know there was representatives from the University of Finley there. And we said, okay, this pandemic is here. Um, how do we work with our schools to adjust to make sure the kids are prepared? What schools, what do you need? Okay, kids are not gonna be able to be fed their breakfast and lunch. And there is a population of our students that rely on the schools for their meals. So YMCA became the entity that worked with the schools to distribute the meals, sometimes taking those meals to the child's home, other times setting up shop at a, at a park and distributing meals that were bagged through the YMCA's Community Foundation and United Way's volunteers. Um, as well as then childcare. Uh, obviously, what folks are planning to have their child in school and suddenly they don't have that, that's going to impact our workforce. So we had to very quickly figure out what did that mean for our local businesses, um, especially, you know, office workers can work from home much easier than our manufacturing facilities. Um, so it was really just kind of bringing everybody to the table and saying, okay, who can address what aspect of this? And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, the city of Finley was in a strong financial position pre-pandemic, and we were able to then manage our finances very tight through last year and continue to be very conservative in our spending to make sure that we are prepared for any economic decline that we would see as a result of the pandemic. And I'll dig into that a little bit more here in a bit. So respond and recover. Um, these are together because they really were happening concurrently. Um, you have to respond by managing our cases, trying to keep things low. Then we started working on, and then while also making sure that we're trying to help support our businesses so that we weren't having, you, you know, um, large layoffs or business closures. How do we continue to re support them? Um, while keeping people safe. And then we moved into the phase where we're doing vaccinations. You know, we still have cases of COVID rising. Um, currently, we're in the top couple of counties for um, COVID cases. Luckily, um, they're all in the more younger population. Um, obviously, we don't want to see that at all, but um, they're individuals whose immune systems are, are stronger and we are not seeing the hospitalizations or mortality that we saw in the older populations when they got COVID. So, you know, we talk about relationships and financial stability. The next two or three items that um, as, as the mayor, I really focused on was balance, communication and operations. Um, and when I talk about balance, my personal approach has been that um, we needed to be balanced in our approach. The coronavirus is very real. It's very dangerous. And I have read so many articles and, and talked to so many physicians and tried to understand everything I possibly could about the virus while recognizing that we, we can't just shut down everything for a sustained period of time and, and not have repercussions. So trying to find a balance of keeping our community safe, keeping our community, uh, our economy balanced, recognizing that there's a lot of mixed opinions um, on how we should be responding. Um, so I've just really tried to keep kind of a, a, an overall balanced approach um, as best I could, recognizing that uh, some items are, are out of my control. Um, the next is, is communication. Again, this was a, it is a constantly evolving um, virus, a constantly evolving situation. And 
in each of these is issues and in, in anything, uh, communication is key. And anytime I talk to folks, I say that the most important, the most challenging thing in any relationship, whether it be as mayor with my citizens or my employees, in my marriage, in a friendship, anyone, you all probably can talk about how communication is one of the most challenging things to be able to do effectively. And so I've really tried to communicate as frequently and consistently as possible um, and make sure that other information is getting out from reliable sources, such as the health department or the hospital. Um, and trying to let people understand my decision-making process. Um, so over the past year, I, I tell people, I feel like I've just been like the constant party pooper and there's always gotta be one, but we had, you know, having to cancel a lot of events or discourage gathering or all of these different items that um, no one ever wants to do, but as uh, it's my responsibility to keep people safe and how, how do I work to try to do that? Um, and so trying to communicate why I made the decision I made. Um, and then operations. We're very fortunate within the city of Finley that we have an extremely strong team. We have 350 employees that come to work every day and, and perform at an exceptional level. And they have been very involved um, in making sure that we can continue to operations, that we manage our expenses, and that we can continue to perform for our community with very little, if any, disruption. Um, many communities still have their um, municipal buildings closed, and we have never closed our, our building. Um, we have always continued to be accessible for citizens that need to do business. Um, and we have just tried to make sure that we're creating a safe environment for our employees and any visitors. Um, and again, going back to that financial stability, trusting our employees to manage their budget, budget to make sure that they all understand the impacts. We also did not have to do any furloughs um, or layoffs. And so, um, you know, there were some temporary hires that we typically do seasonally that we did not do, um, but we ended up managing our expenses, having our budget come in about 80% lower, not 80%, um, of about only 80% of our budget expenses were actually spent last year. Um, and so we actually, with refunds from the Bureau of Workers Comp and the CARES dollars that we received, we ended up actually, and managing our expenses, we ended up actually adding $2 million to our general fund unappropriated balance. Um, so I'll touch on it in a little bit, but we have about $16 million coming into 2021 as reserve on top of our rainy day fund. Um, so here it is, as you can see, uh, the 16.5 million, that's our general fund carry forward balance coming into 2021. Um, currently year to date, this was as of yesterday, our income tax is coming in 10% higher year over year. Um, so we did not see dramatic decreases. We only ended up being 1.5% below 2020 targeted income tax revenues. And this year we're 10% above where we were at the same time last year. So currently our income tax revenue is coming in strong. And as you can see right down here in the green, that is based off of Finley's income tax rate of just 1%. Um, so we have the lowest income tax rate in the state and we perform very well with that. In the orange, um, that is just, just kind of a tidbit of information. Our general fund um, expense budget is 29 million for 2021. Um, so we do typically have a deficit budget projected. Um, this year, I think our, our revenue projection is about 24 million. Um, so we then have to manage that to get it as close to break even as possible. Uh, but we try to not have a use it or lose it mentality, but really work with our departments to manage as is appropriate. So the future. Um, it is going to be interesting, but I'm actually very optimistic. Uh, as I mentioned, our community is well positioned. We work well together. We challenge, uh, 
we take on challenges uh, head first. And um, even with uh, some of the economic uncertainty of the, the impact on businesses, with um, the uncertainty around Cooper Tire, um, our community works every single day to position us to be competitive in for businesses every single day and workers. One of our biggest challenges and is making sure that we are a community that can attract and retain a strong workforce. And um, we want to make sure that it's somewhere where everyone feels welcome and um, that we are able to attract and retain the highest caliber of employees, no matter their background or where they're from or what they're, what they're interested in. And so um, as we kind of work through the next couple of months, we're going through a, hopefully here soon, a strategic planning process to identify what are some additional um, amenities, goals that our residents, businesses, nonprofits would like to see our community establish. And then the city of Finley will work to do our part in helping keep moving forward in that area. Um, what I have on the screen, the future, live, learn, work, and play. It really goes back to how do we create a strong community? Government can do so much, but it's how do we position everybody else in the community to be a valued and, um, what's the word I want to say? Um, I'll say impactful participant in our community. So um, I'm excited because I know there is a lot of opportunity because we've been positioned well financially to continue to invest in our infrastructure, to redevelop um, with the progress that we have made with flood mitigation, to continue to attract businesses as well as develop additional housing, to have great places for folks to, to live. Um, and then certainly the University of Finley, Finley City Schools, Van Buren, Liberty Benton, Owens Community College, all work um, with the city very well to continue to make sure we have a strong workforce and opportunities for learning, um, whether it be you know K pre K through high school or post secondary education or master's programs. Um, we're very fortunate to have that within our community. Um, and I'm certainly grateful for the support that I get each and every day from all of the different stakeholders in our community, um, because it takes a village uh, to be successful. And I'm certainly grateful that during these challenging times, um, we've continued to work well together. So I kind of ran through that information very quickly, but my favorite part is always answering questions. Um, so I just wanted to put my information up on here. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is to either call my office, which the phone number is at the bottom of the screen, 419-424-7137, or to email me at mayor at finleyohio.com. Um, so that's pretty easy to remember, mayor at finleyohio.com. And I would uh, welcome uh, phone calls, emails, or um, setting up an appointment to discuss any questions or concerns that you may have. Um, whether you're a Finley resident or someone who just cares about Finley, I certainly appreciate your time um, in taking here to listen to a little bit about my view on how our community responded in 2020 and how we're positioned well for 2021 and beyond. So Julie, I'll, I'll open it for questions and, and stop sharing my screen. All right, good. Thank you so much for all the information. When you said um, you called the Coming Together um, uh, Act, the Finley formula, I didn't know there was a name for that, but I, I love either, whether there's a name for it or not, I love the idea of all these, um, all these entities coming together to make the community stronger. Um, whether it's under your umbrella, uh, Mayor Murin, or even then reaching out over into the students that we've seen today doing those kinds of things out in our community. Um, really, I think um, one of the benefits, there, there have been quite a few benefits really of the pandemic and, and um, one, one has been um, this, this current sense of hope that we have moving forward that we can do it, sort of a hope of um, we've been through this and now we can do things and we can do things stronger when we come together to do them. So I think that that's an uplifting uh, message and something we all need to keep in mind. Um, 
But I also think another, another benefit was what you talked about, whether it's um, that increases in the general fund. I know, um, you know, all of us, even in our personal lives, we've probably spent less money in, during the pandemic because we're home and, and uh, not doing as much. So, so that, tr that also transcends then over to business, right? <laughs> well, you know what, I'm not sure if that holds completely true for me and my husband. Um, you know, we canceled vacations or postponed them. Um, but I don't think I have ever eaten out so much in my life because I, we were trying to support every, every business. And every week I was trying to find a new, you know, local shop to buy little things from, to send to friends and family and, um, certainly charitable giving. Um, but I, I think that that has been really beneficial. And I think it also reminds us to not take for granted, um, some of the little things I am, I, went to a performance um, last week and they did a great job of making a safe environment for the Silver Blades uh, skating group. And I literally almost started crying. Like I, I physically had to be like, do not cry because I was like, if I start, I will not stop. It was just so wonderful to be at a performance, to be with other people. Um, you know, those are things that we have so often taken for granted. And I, I hope everyone will really recognize how fortunate we are to have all of the different amenities that we have um, and the caliber of performances, but just also being able to get together and uh, humans are meant to be together. So it's definitely been a challenging year. Um, but I think we'll all appreciate it even just that much more. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, for this group, for our audience today, our lifelong learners, they, they, um, they really love to be together as well. And so um, we are hoping in October, we can be back together, pandemic willing and, and uh, all of that. But it sounds to me like uh, Findlay was prepared in a really strong way before this happened, and that um, that really sets the tone for crisis. Um, mm -hmm. So you, to be able to survive that was much easier, I'm sure, because of all the planning and, and administration and and uh, your offices, Mayor Mirren. So for that, we are grateful. Um, I did have a question come in for um, Rachel, I believe, and Crystal. I'm not sure who will take it. Uh, from here, but um, Rachel, if you're still with us, oh, you are good. Okay, Rachel, is it hard? This is the uh, the question that was submitted. Is it hard to pass the dog to the next stage of training? I think this person says, I think I would fall in love with them and not want to let them go. So, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, that in the dog training um, pro in the area that yeah, you work in? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I. I get this question all the time, um, but yes, it is a little bit challenging to pass the dog on to the next stage um, because especially with how unique this volunteer opportunity is too, I basically take this dog to almost everywhere that I go that it would be a positive situation. So they um, go to classes with me, they go to restaurants with me, um, my dog goes to church with me on Sundays. So she's with me almost 24 seven. So we do have a very close bond, um, but I've had that with every single one of my dogs um, that I've worked with through this program. So it definitely does get challenging once you switch them um, back, but it's definitely the most rewarding thing I've ever participated in, especially from seeing my dogs graduate as service dogs and seeing them now working with their children. One of the dogs that I trained is a mobility assistance service dog for a boy with cerebral palsy in North Carolina. And the other um, dog that I worked with is a um, autistic uh, support dog for a child in Southern Ohio. So it has been very, um, rewarding to see uh, updates of how the dogs are doing and what awesome work that they do to help their children that they're now paired with. It's also been kind of nice because once I drop a dog off, I normally pick another one up to start working with that one and start the process all over again. So it's been a very enjoyable experience. <laughs> yeah, and life-changing, I'm sure, in many Definitely. ways. So this in your animal science, uh, as far as your program. So you plan to work this into your life's work as well? Yes, so I actually came to the University of Finley because 
I um, originally wanted to be a veterinarian. I came as pre-vet and I actually will be graduating in May as a pre-vet major. Um, but then throughout my time at Finley, I discovered I didn't want to specifically go to vet school, um, but I loved working with animals. I actually saw this program at another university that I was touring freshman year or like before I committed to the University of Finley. Um, I saw this program there. And then once I committed to the University of Finley, I was like, oh, I still kind of want to be a volunteer through this organization. So then I ended up establishing the club based off of that, um, which has worked out amazingly well. We've had a whole bunch of students on campus get involved. Um, like I said earlier, we have six service dogs in training on campus right now with their handlers. And we even have students that are able to volunteer through the organization that doesn't have their own service dog in training, but are trained to work with the dogs um, whenever their schedule allows it. So it has had a lot of growth with between the two years. And I hope that in my future, um, I'll be able to continue with animal training. Good. Very good. Um, I'd like to in the discussion with an update from Crystal. Crystal, if you'll come back to us. Um, I'd like to just ask if you could give us an update on um, what, what the plans are for your department here at the University of Finley for the future, say maybe starting with the next academic year and uh, what, what do the plans look like? I know it's hard to say with COVID, yeah. but <laughs> what, uh, what are your thoughts? Oh my goodness. Well, I, I like what the mayor said about live and work and learn and play. I think, um, yeah, we, we hope that we can continue to volunteer and to serve in many ways. Um, I think a lot of our guidance is from our Euler. The University of Finley has a committee called and sorry, the plan is the Euler Start Safe, Stay Safe plan. So whenever we've been working with our nonprofits, we I kind of condensed that into the points they would need to know for hosting our students. And the ones we've worked with have all been very amenable um, to that. So I hope we can either follow that or it will be amended. So maybe we will be able to do more in person, um, I, some of our nursing home partners, we were so excited that they, um, they just opened up for some family members to come in, which is a huge step for them. Right. So if you think about being so isolated where they were eating in their rooms and not even being able to eat as a facility together, but then also not being able to have that relationship to see their family in person. Um, for such a long time, I can't imagine. And so they were able to um, finally, a few of them are starting to open. So I really hope that the facilities will just keep opening up around here. I do think it'll still be different in the idea that we will still do vo virtual volunteering. I don't mm -hmm. think that'll go away. We hadn't really explored it before, but mm -hmm. I think that flexibility is really important, maybe for some students that can't volunteer in person or they don't live in the area but still want to give back some of our students are remote learners so mm -hmm. i think that the virtual part will stick but mm -hmm. i hope we can do a hybrid where it's also in person as well but i just have to wait and see uh, all right. <laughs> kind of waiting and waiting to see so i know and we are too we're kind of in limbo right now but there's so much hope out there and so much optimism and and um so we're we're looking forward to uh, to being together again. I agree. Some of the of your virtual things will stick, but there's nothing like real in-person relationship building. And I think to build those relationships and, and uh, Mayor Muren hit on this as well, that, that to build them from the ground up starts in person. Um, maintaining, maybe we can do virtually, but um, like just really like that in person the best. So fingers crossed that we can get back to, uh, to that. Um, at this point, we've run out of questions, so we're going to uh, draw our name for a winner today. So we are going to move over to our wheel of names, and I have um, uh, a click. Here we go. So let's see if we can find a winner today, and then I'll explain our prize here in a second as soon as the wheel stops. And it looks like it's going to stop on Mary Klein. So good. Wonderful, Mary. Um, 
Mary has joined us so much this, this month of April and has submitted so many great comments and we really appreciate uh, Mary, but everyone as well. We, we have had such a great month engaging with everybody and appreciate all of you that have been here for the April sessions. Like I said, in October, please join us brochures and we'll go out with more details the month of September, register right away. We are planning right now for in-person and fingers crossed that we can actually pull that off. So uh, that is our plan. If you like the virtual events and you're around next Tuesday night, well, we've got an alumni event that you might love if you love pets. So if you love your pet and wanna join in at uh, 7.30 next week, we're having a um, animal science um, pre-vet program. We're gonna talk about the program, but also talk about the benefits of our pets in our lives. And um, we'll have an Ask the Vet time for questions and even have a contest for our heartfelt pet story, uh, best one. So join us and uh, share um, in, in that excitement with us. We've got all of these sessions recorded and we're gonna put them all up on our, on our lifelong learning webpage. And we'll be sharing that out with you so that you can either share those with your friends or watch them again. Um, I'm asking for your feedback, so please, send me emails and let me know what you liked, give us suggestions for next time. And, um, and we'll go from there and use those suggestions for October planning. Um, wanna thank all of you for your support of the University of Finley. If you've enjoyed our program today and wanna make a gift, you can visit give.finley.edu. And I wanna thank you, um, Mayor Murin. Also wanna thank Crystal and her team, and we will see you all next time. Bye everybody.